Hello, I am Gerakini Duka from the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. And I'm Konstantino Lumcevic, also from the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. We would like to welcome you to our unit about language teaching in migrants and refugees. In this video, we will focus on the third part of this unit dedicated to vocabulary teaching in migrants and refugees. More specifically, we will talk about studies that have looked into effective ways of teaching vocabulary to students with a migrant and refugee background. As you can see in the overview, we will focus on four studies, the first one looking into arts and vocabulary teaching, the second one into shared reading, graphic organizers and vocabulary teaching, the third one into visual tools and vocabulary enhancement, and the fourth one into flashcards, pantomime, contextual cues and vocabulary teaching. So let's move on to our first study conducted by Cox and Dix in 2012 and investigating arts and vocabulary teaching. The group of participants in this study consisted of young migrants and refugees aged from 11 to 16 years old. The students had diverse profiles and were newly arrived in the UK. The present study examined the effects of theatre processes and other art forms, including creative writing and visual arts, to teaching English as a second language. As you can see here, some of the key axes of the program were the following. Play in the form of games that develop learner skills, imagination, promoting engagement in the learning process, greater fluency and less inhibition, relaxation with a focus on natural and non-pressured language with a targeted error correction, spontaneity and risk with language, replicating authentic communication, drama exercises, facilitating the embodiment of new words and the use of context, and finally, emotion, considered as a core element for developing students again. With regards to the gains, researchers highlight the development of vocabulary in second language, the overcome of language barriers through corporal movement, the increase in confidence with language, and the participation of more quiet learners. The second study presented here was conducted by Davis in 2012 and investigates shared reading, graphic organizers, and vocabulary teaching. The group of participants in this study consisted of primary school children aged around seven to eight years old and living in the UK. The family languages represented in the study were Amharic, Turkish, and Urdu. On the one hand, the method used in the study included shared and guided reading with follow-up activities for exploring literal meanings of words as well as figurative language. For example, during the session, the teacher modeled strategies for identifying and using contextual cues, as well as for using dictionaries and deciding which definition is correct according to the context. Moreover, closed tasks and activities of text substitution were used, generating useful dialogues on the effect of word choices. Here you can see an example of the teacher guiding students through the use of contextual cues in order to discover the meaning of the unknown word commotion encountered in the text. On the other hand, the method of the present study also included the use of graphic organizers to illustrate links between words. Here you can see some examples. On the upper left of the slide, you can see a grid for opposites. On the bottom middle, you can see a tree diagram and on the upper right of the slide, you can see a continuum for synonyms. As a main gain, researchers mentioned that the aforementioned techniques provided students with an opportunity to talk about new words, explore their meanings through discussion, and develop confidence in using the words, as well as cultivated an enthusiasm for learning new words. This enthusiasm is apparent in eight-year-old Suman's words. My favorite word on our word tree is delicious. You can taste the food when you use it to describe your dinner. The third study was conducted by Arispe and colleagues in 2014 and concerned visual tools and vocabulary enhancement. The main aim of the study was to examine the effect of integrating visual methodologies with critical pedagogies in order to develop intercultural literacy in a diverse classroom. As a result, vocabulary enhancement is here presented only as a side effect of the aforementioned aim. 
The group of participants in this study consisted of primary school students in Scotland, newly arrived from Africa, Pakistan, Middle East, and other countries. The method employed was reading and creatively responding to picture books and non-visual texts on the topic of migration and journeys. Here you can see an example of this technique. On the left, you can see an example of an annotated image which demonstrates the interrogation of the words in combination with real photographs and illustrations in order to construct meaning through the interplay between words and images. On the right, you can see an example of an annotated text which shows how this method enables students to visualize the words, think of questions, and illustrate key parts of the text to enhance meaning making. During text annotation, a focus on figurative language and other structural aspects of the text was encouraged. As far as vocabulary is concerned, researchers report that such techniques can promote a more in-depth understanding of words, such as the term refugee. As we read in the paper, students realize that these were people who have been made into refugees. In other words, they conceive that it was the external circumstances that have forced them into this role. At the same time, Visual tools can lead to conversations among the learners and the teacher, rendering the activity more engaged. The last study that we will talk about in this video is by Olumcevic, Podopoulou and Marinis, which is under review. Based on the given study, we will discuss about vocabulary teaching through flashcards, pandomime and contextual cues. The main objective of that study was to investigate whether flashcards, pantomime, and use of contextual cues can effectively improve the second language vocabulary skills of primary school students with a refugee background. Regarding the participants of the study, they were primary school students between the ages of around 7 and 12 years of age, attending reception classes in Greece for a period of 1 to 20 months. The pupils were from almost all primary school grades, except for the first. Their language background involved one or two of the following languages, Kurdish, Farsi, Arabic, while as for Greek as second language, they, they had rather low skills in it, given the fact that their proficiency level was found to be between A0 and A1. The words that were taught through all teaching interventions that will be subsequently presented were selected based on some specific criteria. The main criteria were the common broad topic of environment and nature, the accordance with the student's expected L2 proficiency level, and the appearance of the target word forms in different contexts. Moreover, a main characteristic of all interventions was involvement of the pupils L1s during teaching. So let's see now in more detail each one of the teaching interventions. Firstly, concerning flashcards, the pupils were given cards with a picture on one side of it and the target word written in Greek on the other side of the card. They were given a card for each target word while they were taught 10 words in total through flashcards, five nouns and five verbs. A name of the given intervention was also to form short main sentences with the words taught. Here we can see an example. One of the nouns that were taught was the cloud, and one of the verbs was hides, as you can see in the upper part of your screen. With these words, a sentence which could be formed together with the students could be, the cloud hides the sun. So as you can see, the children would not even need to change anything in the form of the target words in order to create a sentence. Moving to pandomime, during the intervention, a list of the target words was provided to the students. The main process was that every time the researcher would make a movement without producing any speech, the pupils would need to guess which word is shown from the word list. Similar to the previous intervention, 10 words were taught in total, 5 nouns and 5 verbs, which could again form short main sentences. An example in the next slide includes two words that were taught through pantomime, go up and the mountain, which could form the simple sentence, I go up the mountain. 
Finally, let's look at some details regarding the intervention involving contextual cues. Two novel texts were created which were short and included five nouns and five verbs, meaning 10 words in total again. The main task here was that the pupils had to try to guess what each target word meant based on cues that were available in the text. In order to facilitate the process, each pair of unknown words and its useful contextual cues could be spotted based on the color with which they were marked. We can look at an example in the next slide. Here we have a fragment of one of the two texts created. And as it is shown, the unknown words were in bold and in different colors, and their useful contextual cues were underlined in corresponding colors. For example, one of the target words was plants, which was marked in purple, and the useful cues for it were trees, flowers, and more, which were underlined also with purple color. Proceeding to the results, the effectiveness of each teaching intervention was explored based on a test that the pupils completed before the intervention and immediately after it. First, we see the findings for the flashcards intervention. Ten words were taught through flashcards, and those words were also assessed through the test. So the maximum score that the pupils could achieve was 10. Here we see the mean scores for the pre-test and the post-test. And as it is observed, they improved. Hence, flashcards seem to help refugee students enhance their vocabulary skills. Concerning the results for pandemime, Again, the pupils were tested on the 10 words that they were taught through the given intervention. As it becomes apparent from the graph here, the performance of the pupils was better after attending the pantomime intervention. And so it could be concluded that, similar to the flashcards, pantomime is also an effective teaching technique for young refugee students. As for the last intervention, the pupils were similarly tested in a pre-test and a post-test on the 10 words that they were taught through context. As it was manifested, there was some improvement in the pupils' performance, but it was not so prominent. However, this improvement seemed to be associated with the children's age. More specifically, it was shown that older children would benefit more from the given intervention relative to younger children. All in all, in an attempt to make some conclusions based on the studies that were discussed in this video, we could talk about strategies that so far have seemed to enhance vocabulary development in migrant and refugee students to a greater or lesser extent, and these are activities involving arts, visual tools like flashcards or graphic organizers, context and movement. So this was the video about vocabulary teaching to migrants and refugees. Want to learn more? Visit our website 